You know, I don't say stuff like this very often, but for my money, for my family, this travel trailer is about as close to perfect as it can possibly get. And if you're curious to know why I say that, stay tuned, because I like this one. So first of all, hi, welcome to Vicious RV. My name is Josh, the RV nerd, and welcome back to the regular members of the RV nerd herd. Um, what I'm not saying is, is this, this is the, the perfect, perfect trailer. trailer. I'm saying if my family, my household, were gonna get an RV today, this would probably be my pick. But, but why of all the different things? Uh, Cause that's, you know, I have a lot of different options out here. This one just crushes so many things that I like to find in an RV. What I like about this is like, my daughter's getting ready to enter her teenage years. So right now, yeah, it's a family bunkhouse model. And as my daughter gets bigger, the bigger bunks in this are going to fit her and or a friend if we let her bring someone along. But more than that, when the kids enter their teenage years, very quickly, they might stop camping with mom and dad. This one, the way it's designed with its extra large cargo bunk and extra large door on the back, you don't feel like the bunk space is wasted once the kids move on and move out. Direct entry bathroom allows for travel access and just cuts down on so much dirt traffic in the RV. This has an awesome entertainment center when you're stuck inside on a rainy day and just great storage. It is hot, cold camp rated, automatic leveling, tank heaters, factory standard solar, king bed up front because my wife and I, uh, we've got this small little dog that somehow can occupy two thirds of a king bed. I don't know how he manages to do that. His name is Carlos McGillicuddy, by the way, and I love that little ball of fluff but he could actually fit in this thing and go camping with us. But more than that, it's got uh, like smart control systems. It's got a little mini outdoor camp kitchen. Both doors are covered by the awning. I mean, it just, it nails almost everything I would ever want to find in an RV. Now, to be fair, it, it's it's really pushing the bounce of half ton towable. This is something I really feel is better paired up for a three quarter ton. But I mean, short of that, oh my gosh, I love this thing. Now it's got a couple little points of concern or pitfalls. I'm going to make sure I point those out as we go. But overall, I'm about 99% in love with this thing. And I'd love to hear what you think about it as we go. Now I'm doing something different today. I'm actually starting with the lighting off because I think it's a better way to kind of demonstrate some things. There are a couple little individual little zone lights. And one of the ones I think is really smart is back here in the cargo bunk area, they actually put that light back further uh, so that if you are using it as a cargo space, you can access, like, you can reach that light, uh, you know, from the outside. Now, you might notice these lights over here are awful dim. That's because all the lights in the slide out are actually on a handy little dimmer switch, which is cool. Something else that's really neat about the lighting on this. This RV is outfitted with the uh, in-command system. So one touch can basically light up all of the lights in the RV. But if I slink back a little bit further into the private bedroom you might notice how even, you know, there, there's still individual light switches. You don't have to go R2, D2, beep, boop, to be able to access all of that. Now, there's uh, several different ways to basically ignite the full-on, you know, interior lighting on this as well. There is the uh, in-command button that'll just light everything up like a Christmas tree like this, but there's also still a physical light switch in here, so you never have to even use the digital panel just for simple things like lighting, you know, basic daily functions. There, you can go digital, you can go low tech, it just depends, and sometimes it's just convenient based on where you're standing. Like, I always have my phone in my pocket, so I don't mind the digital option, but like, I don't want to have to constantly pull out my phone every time I want to turn the lights off and on. So you don't have to do that in here. I did not expect or uh, intend necessarily to talk this long about the light switches in this Cougar, but that's how that's the kind of detail that I personally appreciate out of this one. Um, I don't have them pulled down currently, but those are all blackout night roller shades throughout those tinted windows in the slide. Now, one of the only downsides, because again, I will be fair with you on this. One of the only downsides to this floor plan is that it does not have campsite windows, but that doesn't bother me personally because we tend to go camping to spend more time outside. So why do I care about an RV then that has a good entertainment center? Well, because sometimes it rains and sometimes it's really nice on a rainy day uh, for everyone to have their own space. Like my daughter would probably be hanging out up here with a phone charger on a rainy day when we're not playing like a board game. That being said, I have turned my daughter into a monopoly monster and she is flipping vicious. Uh, I mean, she's like, she's mean with trades and, uh, she, I tell you what, man, she's gonna, she's gonna tear things up one day. I didn't even, I tried to not teach her how to play Monopoly. So I stood a chance to beat her and she still smokes me on the regs. Anyway, 
Um, so, you know, every now and then, though, after Dad's tired of getting whooped at Monopoly, he needs a little bit of a break, and that's kind of where this can come in handy. Now, right there, you saw an awesome entertainment center. If you are stuck inside, a nice big jumbotron on a rainy day is a very welcome thing. Uh, not to mention, here's your view from the theater seat, or hide to bed um, I like to outfit these with a, a theater seat, although hide to bed is, I believe, the standard on these. And we're going to come back and see this in more detail, but the total kitchen storage in here is absolutely phenomenal. Also, I love the way Cougar has been improving listening. Um, last year, in a very difficult year in RV production, Cougar earned a gold-level DSI uh, award from the uh, RVDA uh, ratings, basically, uh, for, for basically consistently putting out superior product, which was a hard season to do that in. And I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm saying that they've done better than most. And I think a lot of it is because they care. And that shade right there in the door is a symptom of that care and concern because uh, Cougar's been listening. And a lot of people said, if you're going to give me a full window in the door, that's cool but I would like the option for some privacy. So they said, all right, you want some privacy? You got it, we can make that happen, no problem. Um, you may have noticed over here in the dining area, and there is a freestanding table and chairs option, but, you know, and sometimes I like it, but in this model, I like a booth, but what would you prefer? Here's what the booth, you know, the table and chairs, I think pretty straightforward, you get the idea. There's a table and four free floating chairs. But the booth, it gives us a little extra storage. It does fold down into a small sleeper, although that's not really why I care for it in this floor plan since it already has its own sleeping space. I like the fact that either table gives us a version of a no knee knocker dinette right there. That's something that I like about it personally. Um, the uh, slide flooring is like a, a, a woven uh, marine style floor. So it is a carpetless space, you know, um, my, my kid came by this naturally. She just tends to drop crumbs when she eats. And I try not to, I try actively not to, but somehow I'm just a mess when I eat. I, I, for a guy with such a big mouth, I have the ability to miss it when I'm shoving food in my face. <laughs> well, my daughter kind of inherited that, but she's far, uh, quieter than I am. Although I think she just hasn't quite come out of her shell because she is starting to be able to fire off the dad jokes on her own pretty darn well. I don't know if I can be much more proud of my little girl there. Little details. Let's get up here. So 300 pound rated bunks, by the way, I've been trying to do a better job of keeping track of that for you. You may have seen the household outlets. What you may not have noticed is that both of the bunks do have their own USB plugs. Also, I like the fact that we still have a full ventilating window up here and a ceiling vent. Now, I have actually seen uh, several of these in the used market, and twice I've seen people upgrade that vent right there to like a, a big XL vent fan, which I think is a really, really smart idea. But um, take a look at this. Each bunk has its own individual privacy curtain. That's one of those detail things that I personally like to look for. The, uh, the ladder's built in, so you don't have to heave-ho throw your kid into the upper bunk. And you've got the double over double bunks here, giving you all kinds of space right where you need it. That's the thing. This does so many things. Like, we've seen a great entertainment center. We haven't even fully seen the kitchen. I think you already get the idea that it's already pretty large. And the, the list of good stuff just keeps going. And speaking of cool features, let's talk about the air conditioning system. Uh, you've got a factory standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner, but notice how it looks a little bit different. This is outfitted with Keystone's Blade Pure Air System, which is just their, their cute name for something here that can uh, actually has a residential air filter to get just better air quality in your camper. And each of these AC vents have like a little cyclone kind of uh, vent cap on them to help basically suck more of that uh, cold air out of the vents more quickly so it doesn't sit up there. And uh, like racetrack ducting is cool, but sometimes air gets trapped up in a racetrack duct system and it loses some of its cooling factor because it sits in the ducting where it's exposed to more heat from the, uh, the sun. Now that doesn't mean a racetrack uh, ducted air system is bad. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is just that uh, Keystone has found a way to uh, avoid that air from getting stuck in there and, and keeping you cool more easily. Now, once again, we have uh, a full viewing window in the entry door, but they are still including a privacy shade on this. More than likely, I would probably keep that shade drawn all the time here in the bathroom, but there's something about the fact that I have the choice to do what I want with it. 
that I really like. Now, you may have noticed it has a very exaggerated vaulted ceiling. Where that is nice is when you're in the shower. Um, this has a six and a half foot sidewall. So if you're over six foot like me, normally your head would have to be in the skylight. With this one, especially since the shower head is on the inside wall, you don't have to deal with that. And as a taller person, that checks yet another box that I like. I prefer towel bars instead of towel hooks. I like to have space around the toilet in case I'm going to be set up in here a while because sometimes after Taco Tuesday, that happens. Once again, Cougar delivers. But again, I don't want to get the, um, you know, I love it blinders on here. I still want to be, uh, you know, professional and do my job. And I want to be fair and give you a point of concern. Cougar has maintained the use of floor heating vents for maximum heating efficiency. Now, that doesn't bother me because I would just either throw a vent filter pad in there or I would just cover it with like a little throw rug or something like that. But some people really, really, really don't like floor vents, you know, um, there's all kinds of different RVs out there. We sell all kinds of different things at uh, Bish's RV. And if the number one thing you don't want is floor vents, we, we got other options for you with similar floor plans, you know. But this one right here, like I said, one of its greatest assets I, that I think is very easily overlooked is the kitchen space. Because what you don't realize is how the kitchen almost begins over here uh, by the entertainment center below that electric space heat and fireplace. Check this out. This whole thing opens up. Now, that TV is on an aggressive double-jointed swing arm. So if you want to be able to pivot that around to face the bunks at night when you're up in the private front bedroom or when you're outside by the campfire and the kids are down there, you can do that. This is all pocket-screwed cabinetry, full extension roller glide drawers. But look at the drawers on the back side of that kitchen counter right there. That is nerdism number 37. Not an ounce of space, gone to waste. Those big drawers can be really handy if you have some larger pots and pans or something like that. Or, you know what? I could actually see somebody popping out maybe that um, bottom drawer and maybe repurposing that as something like a shoe garage. I could see that working. And it effectively requires no modification to the RV. You just pull a drawer out of the roller glide. No big deal there. But right in front of the door, you have a closet and or pantry space. A good, you know, closet or pantry space. Um, the uh, the countertop prep space in this isn't massive, but it's not bad either. It's serviceable, and in a trailer the size, I can definitely make that work for my family. I don't know how that applies to your family, though. By the way, you have a choice between the 12-volt compressor fridge that you're looking at here and an 8-cubic-foot uh, gas electric. So um, you can either have the bigger, faster-cooling 12-volt fridge, uh, you know, totally travel-safe, um, or you can get the, uh, you know, a little more boondocker friendly two-way fridge that just uses less uh, battery power on propane and it barely sips the propane tank. Um, you may have also noticed, not the easy bake oven. This is one of those larger 22-inch ovens, so you can actually do some decent cooking in there. Um, and my wife likes to say, she's like, eh, I'm not really that much of a cook. You should see the stuff she can whip up on a campsite, including like just these crazy like, you know, desserts. Like she makes these like s'mores bars it's like rice krispies but s'mores with some kind of different cereal in the mix oh my lord they're amazing i don't know the oop, i'm bumping the camera stuff i don't know the full recipe but i think they're made with uh egg and angel's tears now we're going to talk a little bit more about this in the future but uh basically this is a 50 amp coach and you can see that junction box up there this is always second air ready so if the one that we have in stock um doesn't have the second air conditioner uh we can put it on for you tv hookups across from the bed can anybody tell me what that is? We have some very educated viewers here, I've found, and I bet a lot of people know what that is right there. We already kind of saw the little light switch in action. One of the things you might notice in here is look at that set of power outlets by the TV hookups. You see that yellow sticker on it? You're going to see a couple more of those uh, throughout the RV, especially here in the bedroom, like you see those outlets right there. So there's outlets uh, for household plugs and USB plugs right on both sides of the bed. Both sides of the bed have some decent side stands that I do think should be able to, uh, you know, whether it's wireless phone charger pads or CPAP machines or whatever, I think almost everybody wants some kind of bedside stand and they can plug something in, right? Very few people don't want that. You have the same blackout privacy shade for this automotive bonded front windshield, by the way. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, it's a private bedroom, but it can look and feel bigger if you need it to. 
But down below here, this is one of the other things I was saying. We have a 70 by 80 factory king bed, which is very cool. And you may see how we've got, um, you know, dedicated separated storage down below that. There's just some very, very cool things going on in this one. And again, it's not perfect. It's got a couple little things that I, I've pointed out that may not work for everybody. But for me, I'm telling you, man, this is the one I always go back to. But flip it around the other direction, like if you, here, let me actually lay back, if you wake up in the morning or if you're laying down in bed trying to watch TV, that's sort of what you'd be looking at right there. Um, but with the slide close, what do we have for travel and road mode access on this one? Um, it's what I'm going to call two stage access, some, some outlets right there, by the way, I don't know that I did a good job pointing out before. Because it has this big 45 degree angle, like extended countertop and a deep super slide. From the front door, you, you can't necessarily access the whole RV, although that closet, the pantry, and the front bed, those are all handy. Um, so what about everything else? Well, to access everything else, you do need to slide, do the Michael Jackson uh, moonwalk down the stairs out of the RV, although I would actually recommend doing it forwards instead of backwards like I've done. But by virtue of the fact that this RV has dual entry doors, you can basically access everything in this RV. But like I said, it does take the uh, the Travel Trailer Two Stage Two Step to accomplish that. Now, when you do that and the wind slams the door behind me, unfortunately, suddenly we can get to like anything and everything in here. We can get to the all the storage, we can get to the sink. And where this is handy is not just for travel and cooking stops, but like even if you're just trying to get the RV packed up and ready to go, it's got, uh, you know, it is snap, uh, snack tastic, nap tastic, crap tastic, and has pack em up tastic access on this thing. So it can do, like I said, just about anything, but it does take uh, a little bit of A and a little bit of B to accomplish that. Now you do lose the, the bunk ladder in transit. Again, I think that's a pretty small accommodation. The uh, cargo door here though, if you notice, it's a little bit of a, of a slight dog leg over, but if you have something long, you can actually load some big long stuff in here too. Sometimes that can be a really big helpful thing for people. Like if you have an outdoor extra screen room, for instance, like a 10 by 10 easy up, you can load that sucker right in here and not have to worry about like strapping it to the top of the truck or something. And there's so much to cover on this one. We're actually going to wrap around it back to front, front to back and get to see it uh, basically, you know, all closed up and then all opened up. So we are, uh, of course, camera ready. And on the back, you might notice it has both a, uh, a full rear bumper as well as a receiver hitch, kind of a little bit obscured by that spare tire right now. Now, the mismatch steps sometimes throw people for a little bit of a loop. You know, why stable steps on one and folding steps on the other? And every brand does it a little bit differently. But remember when we talked about traveling access on this one, when you have those fold out steps in the back, those can be opened and you can get into the RV. Sometimes at certain stops, you, you can't necessarily get up into the um the stable steps you know they don't fold down they or uh, they don't have the clearance to fold down uh sometimes uh just depends on where you're at now that is an anti-slam entry door right there which is very important because if it wasn't uh either the wind or the you know the kids man you know, i know when i was a kid oh boy i was a door flinger just whoop -ow! i flung that door open like dog the bounty hunter zeroing in on his mark basically you know i did all but boot kick the thing and, um, you know, if uh, there was an awning arm next to a door, well, I, there's a good chance I would have boogered that thing up when I was just a little fella. Now, uh, there is a radiant barrier layer that goes all the way around, uh, starting from the roof, down the nose, and through the belly. And what they're doing below the skin down here is actually pretty fantastic. So first of all, this model comes with factory standard automatic leveling. That is something that a lot of travel trailers just don't even have as a factory option, and it's standard on Cougars, which I think is cool. Now, more than just that, the auto leveling is nice, it's one touch, it's convenient, and they've become far less persnickety, and I've become a much bigger fan of them as compared to when they first came out, and we were being used as human guinea pigs. But the fact is, they work a lot better now, and they are so stable. When you get the jacks down with auto leveling, man, it feels like you're on a concrete pad. That's what I like about them. Because um, sometimes I can get uh, a little bit motion sensitive, which is kind of funny. I didn't used to have that problem, but as we get older, sometimes that settles in. 
a little water, uh, you know, docking station right there. Portable solar prep panel as well. And look what they're doing with their baggage doors over here. So first of all, you're not a member of the 751 Key Club. And if you don't know what that is, you may not realize a lot of RVs have the exact same key for their baggage door. They are uh, putting a, a protective uh, cover on their hinge right there. And it is just a little slam latch baggage compartment right here with a magnet holdback. So you don't have to sit there and, you know, juggle it open with your head or anything. Now we've got a, a very nicely sized front pass-through compartment up here, but look at all the stuff. This is our auto leveling controls, motion lighting. And today we're looking at a Cougar with the base factory solar package. So that's a 15 amp charge controller. The more advanced ones will be a 30 amp, but it's still an MPPT controller, which just means more efficient. Basically be, I'm not gonna bog down this video by diving into all the differences on solar controllers, but you may also notice a little inverter prep there. This RV, if you wanted to add an inverter to it, well then, any of those power outlets we saw inside with the yellow lightning bolt stickers, those could actually be powered off the battery, which normally they don't work that way. This is our in-command control center here, and a couple things. Keystone was the first and still one of the only RV manufacturers who fully color codes every wire in this, which I think has been one of the things that's really just helped Keystone eliminate just a lot of potential electrical issues because it's more obvious what you're wiring into now so that this doesn't get smashed up it does have a little shipping cover there I just pulled that off so you could take a decent look at it now like i said we're gonna see this one closed up opened up both ways every which way but loose we're gonna do this apparently clint eastwood style what was the name of the orangutan with him clyde was that right? Is that right? Clyde, it was, wasn't it? Anyway, sorry. Um, I, I didn't expect to jump into Clint Eastwood trivia on today's video, but yet here we are anyway. So this is actually uh, a little Bob Ross happy little accident that Cougar stumbled into. They realized below their entertainment centers, they had a perfect place to build a little miniature camp kitchen with a pull-out cooktop and dad's medicine cabinet. Now it's a little bit obscured by the, the anti-slam bathroom door right now, but you do have a hot cold utility shower right there. And where that is really, really handy is if you want to rinse the kids off a little bit to get the worst of the sand and the dirt and the turtle slime off them before they come in here to either use the bathroom bathroom or to, to, to wash all that stuff down your drain. Well, that outside utility shower right there is the perfect little place for it. Now, by the way, if you're not familiar with RVing, you're like, why is there a door straight to the bathroom? Like, I get it. It looks uh, a little bit funny. The thing is, you have a deadbolt right here. So you have the choice between pooping alone and pooping with friends. That's a uh, decision that you get to make on the fly. Just sort of depends, I suppose, on uh, what the neighbors are cooking and how much you like them. Now, the rear door back here is not a uh, anti-slam door. So that one, the wind did like to carry shut for me. You might be able to, to open that a little bit further than what we're going to see if you adjust the spare tire over just a bit. A little look at that hitch that I pointed out for you earlier. 300 pound accessory rating on that, by the way. But this is what I was saying right here. Because the bunks are over on the driver's side of the RV, it's not fighting space with a camp kitchen. This is a bigger, wider door. You have more space to load larger cargo in here. And on the inside, I did not have a good angle to show you the little, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to call them dresser storage pockets, but little cargo pockets down there, basically. They just didn't waste any space. Uh, you know, because the water heater is located elsewhere under the bunks, they had the opportunity to just build that out for pure storage. Now, a couple other key details. We worry, we, 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 when we're shopping, we ask questions all the time about the cold camp capability of an RV. But the fact is like 99% of us are not camping when the snowflakes are flying. So what about the hot camp capability? Now, Cougars are not just zero degree rated, they're past 100 degree rated. They test out to 110 degrees, making sure that you can maintain a comfortable cabin temperature. The factory standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner helps that. White AC shroud, white skin on the sidewalls, white roof membrane all come together to help that hot climate capability. And again, you can outfit this with a second air conditioner. If you do that though, um, that front vent right there will have to be sacrificed in the bedroom. But again, you can get this built with a, a standard factory AC. And I know a lot of my like Texas uh, and uh, say Georgia friends or Arizona friends, they're like, yeah, no, I, I need that for sure. 
Now you've also got uh, every single Keystone comes with a 200 watt base solar package that is inverter prepped. And if you'd like to learn more about the advanced solar packages available on Keystone, uh, I will leave you a link in the video description where I've gone through and detailed that so that uh, you know if you wanna get a better idea which one might work for you, if we don't have it in stock, we'll order it or we can actually do an upfit and maintain your warranty from Keystone, which is cool. Now, if this one's close but no cigar, let me know what it would have to do to be a uh, cigar. When you say it like that, it doesn't really make as much sense, does it? Anyway, never, never went about it that way before. My point is, let me know what you like about it. Let me know what you don't. I've given you what I think is fair input on this, and if you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. Like I said, leave me a couple comments. Let me know your favorite part about this one, and also the one thing you'd change given the opportunity, and I'd love to hear from you. Because just like things like the shades in that entry door, your feedback is shaping the development of this product. So let's keep it up together. So take care, stay safe, have fun. <laughs> My arm's getting tired of holding this camera, everyone.